folks, as you can tell, I'm at one of my favorite spots out here, just out here at the sawmill. What I'm doing today is I'm going to get this thing greased up, filled up, and fueled up. Then I'm going to cut up all this leftover that I have from cutting bigger logs. So just a tip here, if you're in the market for a sawmill, make sure you get one that can cut logs that are big enough for where you live. I bought the HM130. Truth be told, I could have probably bought the HM126. But at the end of the day, I do have from time to time some pretty big logs. And as a result, I get some pretty big leftovers. So when I talk leftovers, what I'm talking about is I'm talking about usually your second, third, fourth, fifth cuts. So the cuts you're using in order to make a, I guess, a, a square or a cant. So in order to make a piece of wood that essentially will then be cut into your individual finished lumber pieces. These pieces here, they don't have bark on them. Let's haul one out here. So if you have a look here. They don't have bark on them, like on the flat sides, but they do on the edges. Typically, I just get rid of this stuff. I run it through the chipper or give it away and other people use it. This stuff, it's been sitting around for a while, a little bit of surface mold on it. But I've decided I'm going to take advantage of it. And I'm going to uh, cut off the leftovers, cut off the edges, and uh, keep it as a decent piece of wood. Reason being is I need a whole bunch of 4-inch boards. And at the end of the day, if I can get it out of the material I already got on the ground, why wouldn't I? So that's the plan here today. As you can tell behind me, I got after the wood, uh, got into the wood rather, that I had lying around here. And I ended up making some pretty decent pieces. See this piece here? Came out of an old stump that I wasn't really going to use, an old uh, lower section of the tree. Although it's got a little bit of uh, discoloration, you can see the green marks there. That's from little critters burrowing in, and then we get a bit of moisture in there to discolor it. But despite that, I think they're going to make some cool pieces for some signs. So I got two book, book match pieces, so side-by-side -side pieces. Also cut some other 6-inch boards, cut some 4-inch boards, and I got an overall decent pile here. So that's going to make up the siding on the, on the tiny house. I just got to get around to getting the rest of it milled, and then I'll get out there and put it up. So as I mentioned, I'm going to grease this thing up, fuel everything else so that it's ready to go. And then I'm going to get after finish cutting up this. And hopefully, I add to that pile. So here we go. Okay, first things first. Let's see if we got any fuel in this. And yeah, we got a little bit, but not much. So we'll give it a little drink here. And I push it right to the end of the track so I could sort of lean on it. Put the funnel in. Swat the bugs. And give it a little filleroo. The only trouble is I can't quite see when we're full, so I'm sort of listening here. And it's hard to explain, but the sound changes a little bit as you get close to the top. And as we can, as you can see there, we're pretty close. We'll just give it just a touch more. We'll call that. Oh, call that one good. Which is in there. Ah, oh, what the heck, give it a good drink, eh? And what type of fuel do I use? Well, I use just your normal, everyday, 87 octane, just the regular fuel at the pump, so I don't know if you get better performance with premium, but I can tell you this much, I've run this thing quite a bit on nothing but regular, and it's treated me well, so why ruin a good thing? Other than that, I think what we'll do, we'll get some water in this thing, and you may have seen in my last video, or maybe not my last one, but a few back, I showed you using this pump. So I have no electricity out here, and so what I use is this little Amazon purchased pump with my cordless drill. That threaded on there. I was using this recently for gasoline, so hopefully that doesn't impact, impact it. And then I've got this heck was that? You guys hear that? I guess I'm officially losing it. Anyways, I've got this drum here. And what it's hooked to is an eaves trough, as you can see. And so any water that falls on the roof comes down the eaves trough, down the big old pipe, and into this barrel. Therefore, I don't ever have to bring water out here. I can just use that setup. Let's see if we can get this going. I can't remember if it's forward or reverse I have to go in. There we go. 
Let's get that in there and hold on. And there's no science behind this. I just wait for it to overflow. And I don't use anything but water in my mill. So if it's uh, warm weather, so it's not winter, I use nothing but water and that seems to do the trick. Okay, that's that. Okay, so I find that to be pretty slick. Just take that off. Hang it up there for next time. And I make sure to take the hose out of this because it'll actually siphon itself dry. So I take that out and put this back on to keep critters out. That'll be that. And one last step. I think I mentioned uh, what I was going to do, and that was, I was going to, holy smokes, look at the bugs on that thing. Oh my gosh. I don't know if I want to see what created that. What the? Okay. Uh, as I was saying, next thing I'm going to do is I just wipe off the dust on this. I just used my blower to clean out the mill area. I'm just going to wipe this down and give it a good shot of WD. And I think that's all I'm going to do. Just find my WD. Oof, there we go. Give that a little shot. And actually, I usually put this on before I leave. I usually wipe it down before I leave. So it sort of has time to sit there. But today I want to do some milling, so I'm not going to be doing that. And I also hit up all the spots where the cable goes. And being a Canadian, where they apply tons of salt on the road, I know what rust is. And so I actually coat the entire mill in WD-40 in order to slow rust. Because it's not just salt that causes rust. It's anytime iron oxidizes anytime it reacts with the air therefore with that moisture winter cold warm temperature swings I end up washing the whole thing down look at this that's proof right there see that surface rust it's probably what happened there I dinged that at some point with something and that exposed metal mixed with that oxidization of uh, with the air it just causes that rust so I'm gonna get down to it and stop talking so here we go folks that's going to do it for me here today as you can see i got a pretty good pile here behind me 
Gonna put some stickers in to air that out. And then before long, I'll be using that for siding on the tiny house. In the meantime, if you like this content, you guys know what to do. If you didn't, well, come on back next time. Hopefully it'll be a bit better for you. In the meantime, you guys all take care and we'll see you all next time. Yeah.